Please, Oron. Thank Thanks so much. Someone asked about the aesthetics. Yeah, so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, first, I really want to congratulate uh, Eric and uh, Kira and everyone else who was involved with it. It was a fucking good conference. So, please, for the, <laughs> thank them for doing such an amazing job. They only done one mistake, and that's to invite me to close it. <laughs> and let's see where that's going. Um, as you can see, I think we touched on quite a few very, very important issues throughout those two days uh, that need to be unpacked. And I'm, I don't know if I'm going to help you unpacking it or I'm going to complicate things further, because for me, complicating things is my profession. Uh, not making your life easy is what I'm trying to do. And I think it's important, but uh, that's, you, you'll be the judges. Uh, I am... I have a social contract with you as an artist, and we just seen before, just the slide before that, which was perfect about the role of art and designer. But now, suddenly, I became this con professor of contestable design. What the fuck is that? I'm going to talk to you as one of those people, which apparently there's only one of them around, which is me. Uh, and you'll have to try and figure out why I'm doing it to you. Um, as uh, Steen said at the beginning, and I think it was one of the things that's repeated throughout this conference, we are in a crisis. And we are in a crisis where our tools are incompatible to deal with. We're developing technologies on the basis of the fact that we actually have everything else working on a totally different platform. Yeah, so we are, as, as Harari says, in a sense, we inherited those current political systems, and especially the liberal democracy from the Industrial Revolution at a time where people like Stine and Maria and others are changing in the most fundamental way how are we going to exist? Or if not us, how our kids are going to exist? And if not them, how our grandkids are going to exist? Now, I actually, in the last few weeks, suffering from this existential, existential anxiety, with something that I didn't experience for quite a while. And I'm not sure it's because I'm hitting menopause or because there was some political thing that happened a few weeks ago that really messed any assumption of, or any attempt to pretend that we have a future and we should be optimistic about it. So uh, I'm going to be quite pessimistic because I think that if we are not going to break the rules now, if we're not going to break things now, someone else is going to break it for us, as Stein was saying. Yeah? And I like this American way of saying if we're not going to be the bad guys, someone else would be the bad guy. Yeah? So let's see where it's going. So in a sense, so this is a slide that I had running for quite a while. This, and, and that's, again, something that I think was uh, repeated uh, throughout uh, the, the last couple of days, that we are living in a very, very interesting time, in the sense that our technology is becoming more lifelike at the very same time that our life becomes more technology-like. We allow our technology more and more autonomy, and we've seen so many examples just today, at the very same time that we are trying to assert our control over already existing autonomous systems and referring to that as trying to rationally engage with them, forgetting the fact that, as we heard today as well, we're totally irrational. How can irrational beings can rationally design an independently autonomous system without fucking it up? I would claim we can't. I would also claim that any attempt, and this is, should be the bench line in regard to how we actually treat the world around us, any attempt to try and assert one's control over another autonomous system is by definition a violent act. And we all involve with it. We all engage in daily violence against any other autonomous system that we're trying to assert our control over. And be it now a piece of technology that is autonomous or another living being or any, any other assemblage that we need to deal with. Now, interesting enough, I just came across this quote from Goethe. Goethe? Goethe. We, which we just uh, heard uh, it was uh, reinterpreted by Feynman, but this actually came, came before. Yeah? So, to understand means to be capable of doing. To understand violence means to be capable of doing violence as well. I also have an issue with language. So, one of the things which we heard a lot about was kind of the idea of language. And, and one thing that I admire about coming to meetings like this one is that 95% of the people in this room are engaging in a conversation on a very high level in a language which is not their mother tongue, and we think we understand each other. Now, to some extent we do, but to a large extent, 
And especially when it comes to working across those so-called disciplines, we talk over each other time and time again, having assumptions that we're somehow able to communicate as those mythical rational beings that we are not. But it's quite amazing. So, so to do with language, we heard all of those biological metaphors about a hybrid. The problem with the hybrid is that, strictly biologically, a hybrid, or according to Lanius, and we heard about Lanius before, a hybrid is infertile, it's sterile, it's a dead end. You know, is that what we want? Is this the kind of engagement that we're willing to engage? Okay, it's a beautiful thing. It might be, we, we talked about the fact that, yeah, a hybrid, the first one is something which is exceptional. But in order to get more hybrids, we can only clone it, yeah? Or vegetative kind of reproduction, because a hybrid, by definition, cannot sexually reproduce, so you can't go anywhere with that. So this idea of the hybrid might not be the right metaphor. Maybe it's parasite. And actually, I like the parasite. I think parasite matter. And when matter is way more than the hybrid, <laughs> being a parasite myself, I feel that this is the way forward. And in a sense, forget about the discussion about evolution that we had, because actually the major steps in the evolution of life on Earth came through parasitic relationships, not through random mutations, not through, not through incremental steps within kind of the evolutionary Darwinian idea of the survival of the prettiest that we heard before. It's actually about systems coming together without initially having any mutual benefit and by accident benefiting each other and jumping through an evolutionary scale. So I would go for the parasites, maybe next time. Mm. Yeah. Um, something about the relationship that artists are engaged with in this context. Uh, it's something that didn't really come up, but uh, you know, we heard that this uh, conference is really about kind of what happens when technology and ecology, for example, come together, when you have all of those hybrid relationships or biocytic relationships between those different entities. But what is really a kind of a relationship that artists play when it comes to those new relationships between living systems. Basically, what is the relationship that artists exercise when they engage in violence against other things? All right, Let, let's be clear about it. What do they want from us? And Europe is getting increasingly scary for me. And luckily, I'm not really based here, so I can tell you the kind of funding that is now being given to artists to engage in those crossovers between living systems or technological systems and society and culture are neoliberal and are driven by exactly the type of political system that is bankrupt as we go through those transitions. It's a, some kind of a strange survival mechanisms of those systems in order to try and maintain the artist as the people who capture your imagination to continue believing that it's business as usual. And it's not. When you go to art and technology festivals that look more like trade uh, shows, when you read about EU funding towards art and technology that talks about innovation and artists as engines of innovation. When those types of conversations are taking place and when artists are actually submitting themselves, rolling over and saying thank you for this kind of stuff, you know, you might as well go home. We might as well have an artist strike. Maybe that's another thing to have. <laughs> so how are we dealing with it? Are we going to engage with the crisis? What happens if, again, I'm grumpy and I might be grumpy also because something else, because this strange assemblage of my biological body, my bacteria, and the byproducts of some yeast that I had to consume last night because he didn't let me out of the bar, <laughs> <laughs> makes me all more concerned that things are not really looking very good. And, how, and, 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 and we, if we constantly convince ourselves that there's a way out of it, we're not really doing much besides convincing ourselves that there's a way out of it. So maybe we have to kind of really break the rules. Or we can follow Donna Haraway's ideas. So Haraway <laughs> talks about that she's a compostist rather than a posthumanist. And she talks about the idea of the kin, and that's another idea maybe to talk about in relationship to other biological beings. Uh, Maria was talking about the fact that uh, we don't need to do any more kids. I, I would have other conversations, maybe that's another issue I would claim when those statements come, and I'm not accusing you of anything, but when those statements come from Europeans that have 
a footprint of a village in sub-Saharan Africa, maybe we need less white people. And this is another conversation that we need to have in regard to what we've seen yesterday and what we've seen today. And this is my way out of taking any responsibility. We've been fucked over by middle-class, middle-aged white men. Being a middle-class, middle-aged white man myself, I can't fuck you over, but I can tell you, you have to listen to other people. Not me closing down this conference for you. So, how are we going with time? <laughs> it's... Hmm? Anyone wants to respond? No, let's uh, have a conversation now just for a little bit. Maybe I'll come back to Because I have uh, something like uh, 20 pages of uh, keywords that I just put throughout uh, those two days. And trying to decipher them would be quite difficult. In particular, <laughs> it's like poetry. But I can randomly say, and, and actually something really strikes me. I, I can't remember exactly why, but when Steen was talking, I wrote this sentence. Where is it? Well, all the way up there, you see, there's a lot of it. Now I know how it is to be fucked over again and again by a huge wave. And that's something to do with you, and I just can't really figure it out. <laughs> 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 but this is to do with kind of getting this wave of the ideas around how we're going to engage with life in the future, how the world is going to deal with us. It's, it, was, it came just before... Where is it? Yeah. Ah, artists have to tell stories about Bink. <laughs> and artists constantly are being asked to tell stories about Bink, <laughs> which is biology, information technology, and what was it, the other? Technology. Nanotechnology, yeah. So the kind of stories that we're being asked to tell might not be the right stories. And then actually, I really like what you put. The artists are actually there to problematize things. You know, when I see someone, there's a, you know, people say, if they see a problem, they see a challenge. If I see a solution, I see a symptom. Yeah? So how are we kind of going to engage with those things? How are we going to analyze what it's the symptom for when people are talking about finding solutions to the problems in the world uh, is, I suppose, my role as this strange contestable design thingy uh, that I am. What other? I just highlighted some things. Today was amazing, by the way. Today was, you know, I, I really enjoyed many of those conversations. I think that, you know, we, we talked about, there was a mention of uh, novel ecologies, which is kind of one of the ways out. Actually, uh, Richard Hopes is kind of talking about it. he's being hated so much by the other ecologists. But this idea of the fact that we need to suck and stay with the trouble, as Haraway is saying, yeah? We can't change it. We can't try to get rid of uh, invasive species anymore. We can't change the world we exist in. We need to figure out how we stay with the trouble and continue with it. Um, Ah, nature. And, and we heard, and Eric was talking <laughs> about the idea of nature, which I think is really important because it's not just Morton that talks about the fact that we really need to drop this concept. It's even Latour who talks about the fact that nature is a religious term, and it's not helpful. If we want to figure out how we work in this world, referring to those met the metaphysical idea of nature is not going to dig us out of this hole. We need to refigure the way we engage with the world around us without talking in metaphysical terms. But how we can actually make things sacred at the very same time? How can we say that actually life is something that we don't want to be fucked over with? How can we say that life is a has a special place in our world without resorting to metaphysical arguments? Where can we take it? Maybe by understanding, and this is going back to language, that our language is poor. We're suffering from extreme poverty. We heard again and again people not willing even to say this contestable term of the A word because this is a new concept that we can't even come to terms with. So even when we invent a new language, we can't even deal with it. When we try to be precise, everyone is shying because the A word is some kind of a strange thing that we have to be afraid of because it's not well defined. What about life? Life is one word that describes such a huge range of things that we need to engage with. And, and now 
We have to be, you know, when, when Stein says he wants to create life, you know, people would shoot you in America for saying that, especially now. Yeah? <laughs> now as long as I don't, uh, as long as I, I construct it, then, then the religious right, they love me because they, you know, we, they, they believe in the human creator. <laughs> they believe in, in God, the engineer, God, the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And, and I suppose, especially now, you, you kind of, with your appearance, you, you fit really well in regard to the ideals of what God looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so life. How we as artists actually figure out a way to tell stories about the future, about the world, without to use the word nature and without to use the word life. We don't have the language. We don't have the verbal language to deal with it in almost any language that we are all kind of have here. And for certainly, we have very little visual language to tell those stories, to have those narratives, to have those uh, engagements. It's kind of strange that I realize that most of the work that I'm involved with has this kind of devilish red <laughs> aura to it. It's like fucking hell there. And that's where we are now. So OK, let's, let's have a conversation, please. I think I said enough, no? Thanks. <laughs> yes. So, so let's use the microphone because then it's also on the stream, and maybe you could. Yeah. Since you've been teasing me so much, I think that yeah, yeah, okay. And um, I, I want I know to. That you can take it. That's yeah, right. yeah. No, we, we had a lot of fun last night or in into the morning, um, and and one one of, one of the things that uh, that I. Um, that I think where I would like to start, because we are sort of, I think we agree on pretty much everything except that you are dark and I'm trying to, I, I'm sort of optimistic. <laughs> That's right, you, you're still optimistic. I'm yeah, 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 I'm and, and I may be naive, but, yeah. but there was one of the young people after I don't know how many beers that said, we need, we need, a, um, uh, we need a manifesto, or we need some way forward or, or a manual. And, and I think that's, uh, that's really an inter interesting concept because I think that we, uh, if we, we, we think about the, the mess we are in, yeah. there's so many challenges yeah. and they are uh, moving or they are coming from so many different uh, corners. So, so I would like to propose mm -hmm. that we, and I think we already have a, mm -hmm. a, a very good way by which we can navigate the, uh, uh, the climate issues. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of political opposition mm -hmm. against, but we know what to do. I think that, and but but we should not only focus on that. And I think that the old, sort of say the classical West, uh, sorry, the the classic the classical left wing, mm -hmm. uh, or from from the industrial age, mm. they haven't sort of con co uh, sort of caught up with the bink <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> narrative yet. Yeah. I don't know what it is either. Mm. But I think that we can by looking at, for instance, individual freedom. That's some. I want to be mm. free. I don't want to be suppressed. Yeah. And. And we can then project that down and see how can we conserve or preserve our privacy. How can we uh, ensure that uh, that there is um, uh, that there is cyber security also for, for for our data. We can then we can then make make it concrete. There, there'll be ways by which we can, uh, as an, I don't remember what what your name is, but the, uh, where you where we can actually evaluate technologies and say this is a good technology and this is a bad technology and this is much better than the other one, and the same with uh, I know that that uh, the traditional or the old fashioned uh, uh, left wing likes to talk about the capitalism and the workers yeah. and the uh, I don't know what, but that's not how this is not the world we live in anymore. Yeah. Uh, if if the if the world goes to hell goes to hell at the at the marketplace, then I don't have any any pension, yeah. and and. And uh, you know, we you can create billions by by. Uh, you don't need to have a factory. You just need to have a computer. So so we are living in a different world. But certainly, inequality is a huge issue, and and that we can pr parameterize that also and saying, look, uh, you know, I I feel like an idiot when I pay taxes when when Apple doesn't pay taxes and they have you know a lot more <laughs> money than I do. So again, I think there is a concrete and and operational way out of this mess. And, and I, I really urge you not to listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that, 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 that's at what, least, yeah. no, I, I think that there has to be, no, no. Uh, mm -hmm. but both, both your perspective yeah. and, and perspective uh, from, from me and others. Mm -hmm. But I think that there is a, a way out of the mess. Mm -hmm. And you tell me, as, we, as you did yesterday, that I'm wrong. I would like to, because okay. I think that would be really interesting <laughs> right. for the... For so the so, so here's a really interesting thing. You, you came up with a really beautiful new narrative about our fictional friend, which we call the dollar or the money. Yeah. 
it, it's, it's totally fictional. We, we live in a way when we worship, you know, actually, uh, again, Harari talks about the fact that money is the most spiritual thing ever. It's the most metaphysical thing because it doesn't have any grounding in any reality any longer. You know, it, it's whatever story we want to tell about money we can tell, and, and we just heard now, which is a really, really beautiful and seductive story. I wish that would happen, you know. But in order for that to happen, no one is going to lie down and say everything that we supposedly worked for or we got other people working for us for is now debunked and, and will allow you to change the monetary system to such an extent that, you know, it, it, it needs something which is more robust than, uh, than just convincing people, yeah? And, and I don't want to advocate to any kind of action, especially not online and kind of, uh, but, <laughs> you, you know, in a sense, but, and, and this is kind of a conversation we had yesterday. You talk about privacy, you talk about other issues that are extremely important if we would live in normal times. But if I would tell you that they, they, the world is ending tomorrow, would that still be an issue for you, the privacy or the fact that your student needs to get uh, some money for an invention that they're involved with? You would say no. If I would say the end is going to end the day after tomorrow, or in two weeks, or in three years, or, you know, when we would figure out that the urgency is so important for us that we have to drop quite a lot of things that we think are dear to us now and make the sacrifices not to reach the stage because, you know, no, I, it's kind of funny because I hate those doomsdayers. You know, it's like, I, I don't want to be a doomsdayer. But again, I think it's my menopause talking. It's really messy. And we are looking down a really dark hole. And I'm less interested in privacy. I'm more interested in ideas of life in general. And I think, you know, the kind of things, the, the ontological breaches that yourself and other scientists and, you know, what we see now, uh, it's going to be a major, even if we are successful, even if the system still operates, the kind of, and, and we had, you know, what we, in a sense, what we choose to do to do other living systems we end up doing to ourselves in some stage or another. We hear the dark winds of, of, of fascism and worse than fascism, you know, we see people actually talking about biology in terms which are very, very similar to Germany in the 1930s. And, but now we have some more power to engage with it. Now you can have DNA tests. You don't just have to see if someone's dick is cut in order to kill them. Yeah? So there's things that we really need to figure out before it's getting too bad. And, and, and it's like, it's not a call for arms because I, you know, maybe we should all be nihilistic. Maybe we should all go to Bar Moscow tonight and, you know, get smashed again and, and just wait for the tidal wave to come. Yeah? We have another yes. question. Thanks. Yeah. I, <laughs> Oh, hello. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, but I just wanted to join into the fray. Um, the notion of, you know, the world or one world or an idea kind of really concerns me. And, um, you know, when Oron, you just said ideas mm -hmm. and uh, suddenly there was a pluralism that was present. And the notion that we have one world, it's like, um, you know, one of the speakers said, I don't use a dishwasher, the, the dishes just get washed. In Australia, there was a civic responsibility to have a dishwasher because it uses far less water, because we had drought for 10 years. So the point is not that there is a right or a wrong, the point is that there are many, many different ways of enacting what is appropriate for the planet as a whole, depending on where you live on the planet and how you live and the ecosystems and infrastructures that you operate within and, you know, how you entangle you yourself in those ecosystems. And, um, you know, it's, we're in, we're in a very Scandi-centric, Eurocentric kind of environment here and and I think it's important to remind ourselves that that there are other ways of being in the world that are not only just as valid but uh, actually are required to exist and are required to have a voice in order for this perspective to continue to exist in some kind of viable nourishing you, way. You're totally right, and I think you know this reminds me there was one thing that I wanted to raise as well. So many places I went to in the last ten years or so. Oh, that's, but where, where they really like the William Gibson quote about the future is here but is not distributed yet. Yeah? Which if I hear it another time, it's, uh, you know, it, it's exactly this kind of conversation about the fact, and, and this is what California was saying after the election, that we're like America in 50 years. You know, the sense, the smugness of the future is here but is not distributed yet, 
without acknowledging the fact that there's so many, and we heard again, we heard this whole idea of the fact that time is not linear. You know, this is, the, this is a very linear notion in regard to how we think about time, while actually, we, while acknowledging to some effect that time is, you know, it's this paradoxical thing. And I think we, we, we went through, and, and again, we've seen it time and time again today and other times, this cognitive dissonance that we all exercise in regard to shifting and moving between those different ideas about time, you know, because we, and, and a lot of it is to do, not just time, but other, you know, our relationship to life and, and everything else. And it's a lot to do with the fact that we are living in a time <laughs> where a biological understanding, uh, what we evolved as biological beings is constantly being assaulted by what kind of world is being, or what kind of worlds, you're right, has been constructed around us. And, and we constantly fight back and forth between uh, are biological and uh, less than biological. Um, I would like to um, go back to uh, the beginning of your talk mm. when you were talking about violence. Mm. And you sort of warn against violence. But I think actually we have to embrace violence. And you actually um, also pointed out to Donna Haraway mm. and uh, her newest book uh, about, I mean, Staying entitled Staying with the Trouble. But I also would like to refer to other quotes uh, um, that come from um, quotes of Donna Haraway, where she's uh, saying that, um, well, eating is killing, you know. Mm. She's saying um, that um, we have to embrace killing, we have to kill well. And I, I'm just thinking that maybe uh, if we just again go back to violence, and you were warning us against violence, um, um, yeah, against violence um, performed on others, maybe we should embrace the fact that we are actually uh, performing violence on ourselves as species, and somehow embrace this. And um, as we know from sort of deep history or, or deep time, um, um, that environmental um, crisis uh, usually connected with some big um, sort of dying episodes, uh, they also uh, create a, a new situations and new life forms and new perspectives are coming. So, you know, if we maybe embrace the fact that uh, we are creating violence towards ourselves and the new governments, uh, US and others, you know, this is like really just sort of as if they're driving towards the, the wall, you know, I mean, it's speeding up the process. Maybe if we just allow that way of thinking, okay, we're going to have the full impact yeah. And then some new narrative will come out of it. Maybe Steen would not like that narrative because it's a, it's a whole different story. But perhaps you could um, think of this. Because, you know, maybe then, again, uh, what I was saying earlier that people like, uh, obviously, these are art uh, projects, but um, people like Kelhammer, who is actually saying, OK, these, these trees, they already had this experience, so they will just be OK in the future. But uh, hybrid corals, they are new, but they are the ones that will come out well from that yeah. um, impact on the wall. So maybe you were saying maybe this is the end of white people, I mean, but maybe it's the end of, of people, I mean, in that prominence. I'm not saying that this is a gloomy thing. I actually would embrace it fully. I think, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying we all should die out, but I'm saying that maybe others should have their goal. Yeah. So why don't we embrace violence that we actually perform on ourselves and say, okay, you know, we eating, we killing, but others may just do this to us as well. We don't have to be on top of a food chain in a big picture. So here's a beautiful example. I, I didn't meant anything you were saying there. I was warning, you know, I was, I was asking us to acknowledge violence, not to fear it. I was warning against the fact that most liberal democrats and, and, and most Western people don't acknowledge violence. You know, this is, so, so I was warning against the lack of awareness, not that. And, and I didn't say, and you said, you said, I didn't say it's the end of the white men. I, I, I might have alluded to that, but I didn't say that. And here's this, again, it's that this beautiful thing about language and our way in which we constantly mutate our understanding of what each other is saying. But, but that's nothing to do with what your point is, and I think you're right. And I think, to some extent, you know, we don't have to embrace all level of violence. And, I, and I'm, you know, Derrida is talking about that as well, but uh, the, there is an issue about the equalizing of violence, so every violence is okay. So, you know, if we embrace violence, we would embrace it on all levels. No, we, we have to understand that life is much more complex than that. And this is kind of the issue I have with life as well. We don't have a language to, de to 
deal with the complexities and the scalabilities of those phenomena. You know, we have one word to describe a range of activities from the, you know, me blowing in your ear and me cutting your throat. It's almost the same kind of word. Mm. Or me a, a growing a cell in a petri dish or having a, a farm, you know, industrial farm in Arizona or something. It's, it, we, we really need to figure out ways, other ways to talk. Mm. And, and I think this is the urgency to a large extent. Uh, I have a male point of view, I guess. <laughs> I think we're, we're, we're living in a very yeah. anal time. We try to control everything. Mm. It's a culture of masturbation. Mm. We need to get everything immediately by push of a button. Mm. And this is clearly something that doesn't work out very well with mm. nature or with mm. anything that has to do with some kind of sustainable energy system, right? Now, my question would go, there's this guy called... Buckminster Fuller mm -hmm. from the States here. He was an architect and an artist and a visionary guy who went on this uh, to answer these questions that mm -hmm. we've been talking about mm -hmm. already in the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of weird that we kind of forgot for 70 years that, oh no, we're fucking it all up. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's just continue doing it. Now, my question would be then, okay, if this is the age of masturbation and immediate satisfaction, how can we come leniently down from that? Should we fuck each other more or do we need like uh, rock and roll and hippies and that type of stuff? What's your take on it, man? Great question. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> as, as a middle-aged, middle-class white man, I can tell you, but... Um, <laughs> But what I can tell you is that we are suffering from cultural amnesia. Yeah. And, and it's, it's an acute condition that we are suffering of. And, and going back to stories we're telling each other and telling ourselves, actually quite a few of the stories that are being told at the moment have been told already in the turn of the 20th century, all the way up to the 50s. Uh, I, I think, you know, the, the Second World War was a great kind of rebooting event in regard to the type of narratives. Uh, but in many cases, we by rebooting that we also forgot quite a lot of stories we were telling ourselves. So in a sense what I was alluding to, for example, in the beginning about this, uh, no, how, how we're dealing with life without needing to uh, engage in metaphysical questions, the question, and this is kind of, you know, the term synthetic biology was coined in 1911 by a scientist called Stefan Leduc, who was fighting Bergson because Bergson was talking about the Alain Vital, this vital force, while uh, Leduc was trying to prove that life is, you know, he was a pure materialist and said life is merely a, a chemical reaction. And, and then in that book as well, which most of the book is really trying to debunk kind of the idea of the vitalist notion, he also predicts the future where he coined the term synthetic biology and he says we know about, enough about life, 1911, we know enough about life so we can start synthesizing it. Mm -hmm. The hybrids of, you know, they didn't even know how DNA operates, they didn't even know what it is. And they already said we know enough to be able to synthesize life. So, you know. We're reenacting some of those stories. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether my question anymore is relevant after hearing the discussion, but I was just that, was it an irony or what did you mean by saying that we could write a manifesto because we would know what to do and we could... could, uh, could um, design in a way what would be the best technologies or value the technologies. So, uh, That's a question to stay in, yeah? This is a question maybe for, yeah. for you. Uh, I never but said we should write I, I'm just person. that, have you come, not being in this interesting discussion, have you come to some kind of, a, um, let's say, criteria <laughs> in a way how to go forward, I mean, during this meeting, if not a solution? <laughs> Thing. It's a question to you or a question? Yes. Yeah, we've had several international conferences where we've uh, gathered economists and engineers and historians and artists and uh, you know people from the media and uh, policymakers trying to get trying to figure out whether there is a, a way out of this mess. And um, and I, I I certainly don't uh, want to claim that uh, that any of us have a, have any silver bullets. But we uh, but I think there is a consensus at least in in the community that I where I work together with. Uh, that I work together with on these issues, that um, uh, that we have to pass.
I can make here. And this is what I talk when I'm when I'm talking to many of my colleagues at home. They say, but we can't do anything. But that's wrong. We can do something. But we just have to figure out ways by which we can attack things piece by piece. And we've seen in Denmark there are regions that say, look, we don't care what the government says. We are going to be CO2 neutral by a certain date. We are we are making a public-private uh, uh, what's it called partnership, and we just do it, and they're doing it. And in the same way, we can go together, and we can see we want to have a democratic IT infrastructure. We don't care what the government says. We don't care what Google do, does. We just do it. And it's not difficult. It's not. It's not easy. It's hard. In particular, in the beginning, and, and I, I'm just saying that there are ways by which we can take step by step, one foot in front of the other. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I do believe that, uh, I, I agree with all of you, that uh, the climate crisis is a really big one, but it's not the only one. We're crying out loud, there are many other big issues that are entangled in this that we also have to address. And, and at the end of the day, if uh, the sea levels, they go up to 10, 15 meters. Guess what? We will survive unless we have a nuclear holocaust. We've had the Black Death, we've had all kinds. That doesn't mean that I want to see sea rises. But I'm saying that, um, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's really interesting. It's been a cultural interesting uh, experience for me to see how gloomy and dark uh, most people look at this. I just would like to have a little, a little more what is it called? Can do attitude and say, God damn it, we're humans. Yeah, as you as you saw the last order sign came already up, the light was already blinking. And um, I just want to say, actually, I think that for me it was very important what Monica was pointing out because she actually kind of maybe tried to say how anthropocentric the Anthropocene discussion is. Yeah? And that what we are talking about is actually not the survival of the planet, but it's the survival of the species. I think that is a very important kind of uh, thought to also take with us yeah? that uh, actually the planet will live on yeah? and at least i hope i'm not wrong with that yeah uh, but i would like to thank you very much for these two days uh, for me uh, it was really a really successful conclusion of our two years project and i yeah want to thank you very much that you have been part of it and also very active uh, in that and i hope that uh, some of these questions, some of this input which we uh, got uh, will stay on and will lead to other conversations and actually to actions as well. And I hope that uh, we maybe have some sort of a continuation, even if it's a hybrid. Yeah? <laughs> And, and uh, for that, then, actually, I want to hand over to Kira. No. OK, well, my words are just words of thanks. And um, it's been an extraordinary couple of days. And of course, we're going to continue conversations this evening um, over dinner. So um, looking forward to that very much. So my thanks uh, very much go to the Theatre Academy and to the many people uh, working here who've helped make this happen. Um, I'm extremely grateful, and um, and also to you and to Pirita and to uh, the BioArts Society for um, initiating this, this partnership all those months ago. This has been wonderful to see this come into fruition. Uh, so we are going to roll up our sleeves and do quite a lot of work now over the next couple of hours. So I think it's time to get to work, isn't it? So thank you very much.